The new 96 one now. Guys, think quick. Most toilet seats broken by the head in one minute. Seven. 14. 46. Most watermelons chopped on the stomach in one minute. Nine. 21. 25 with a machete. I, I, thought, close, I, thought, it was, I thought it was close. What's up with all the trivia, Russell? Actually, I just came from the Guinness Museum downtown with Ripley's, you know, right there next to the Alamo. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Super haunted. Like, they're afraid to work there. They've even seen each other's doppelgangers. What? That's crazy. I know, right? Have you ever seen a doppelganger? Not me. I've never seen one of myself, but I was cruising the internet one night, and I did find one of Russell. What? what? Huh? Oh, come here, you gotta see I this. don't know what he's about to show y'all, but this is not true. What? But that doesn't even look like me, man. Come on, get out of here. It looks just like him. After the initial shock and horror at the image of my doppelganger has worn off, I find myself in downtown San Antonio, Texas, at the hallowed grounds of the Alamo. It's a special place. You can just feel it. A lot of death here, though. They said at night, when they close up the barracks in the morning, you can actually still smell the blood. Of course, they would never allow the sorcery of ghost hunting in here, so where we're going tonight, maybe the closest we're ever going to get. It was here that many brave men drew a line in the sand and fought for something bigger than themselves. Well, most of them died. Then were burned on giant funeral pyres. Yeah, heroes don't always get the girl. As it turns out, the location full of doppelgangers we're investigating tonight is directly across the street from the Alamo and was built on where the outer wall once stood. Coincidence? Probably not. Alex, what's going on, man? Russell, nice to see you, man. Yeah, thanks for having us out here. I had no idea. How long have you worked here, by the way? So, uh, believe it or not, I've been here for 16 years. Wow. Going on 16 years in March, yeah. So you've so seen a lot then. We have. We've seen lots of, of weird occurrences, of things that we can't explain. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's been going on for as long as we've been here. So why now? Well, I, I think it's time. You know, we all get some answers, kind of see well, what we really got going on here. You sure you want to know? Uh, about 50-50, you yeah. know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited to know. The fact that Alex says this has been going on for years makes me really wonder about a connection to the Alamo. So where's all the activity been happening? Well, really all over, man. Uh, is we got three attractions here. We have, we're at the Guinness World Records Museum now. Uh, next door, we have the Tomb Raider 3D. And our most popular attraction is right in the middle is the Ripley's Haunted Adventure. It's a year-round haunted house, got live actors, and apparently it's a haunted, haunted house. A haunted, haunted house. Guess there's a first for everything. So Alex, it just occurred to me with all this talk of the doppelgangers, I may not even be talking to the real you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how does one check that, you know? Yeah, I mean. That's really true? That's happened? You've seen doppelgangers here? Yeah, we've had lots of stories of people claiming to see someone that's not uh, the real person. Doppelganger is a German word that translates to double walker. It's basically a duplicate of you. But this is no laughing matter. It's believed if you see your own doppelganger, it's an omen of your impending death. So this is the room where they've seen the shadows. So right in this space, either late night or early morning, they've seen uh, dark shadows walking around right in this spot. It almost looks like it's one of our actors from the haunted house walking around, except we know that there's nobody in the building at seven o'clock in the morning. It's really interesting they're seeing both doppelgangers and shadow people, because doppelgangers are believed to be creatures that cast no shadow. So who else is here? So Alex, I can tell that you really do believe this place is haunted. Without a doubt. What's the one thing for you, though, that like just erased all doubt that, boom, there's a ghost here? It has to be what happened up in the Haunted Adventure. Why did I know you were going to say that? All right, let's go. Let's go. 
All right, we're about to enter the haunted adventure. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's After go. you. As I tread through dimly lit rooms filled with fake blood and naked hanging torsos, I begin to feel the uneasiness Alex is talking about. It's real. It's overwhelming and very ominous. I can go into haunted places all day. Put me in an actual haunted house, I'm gonna end up screaming like a 12 year old girl. I know it's a haunted house and all, but there's just something more to it. I mean, it's designed to be scary. <laughs> and there it is. I'm gonna need a doctor. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, let's see, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, can we go ahead and shut it down, please? Oh, so now we can shut it down, okay. So we're now in the kitchen scene. This is one of the scenes where we've had reports of actors uh, finding a lot of this flatware and decorations just kind of on the ground. We have to go ahead and bolt a lot of this stuff down to prevent them from just ending up on the ground the next morning. So these things are moving on their own? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, these aren't that appetizing. I don't know why you'd want to touch these, honestly, but yep. that's crazy. This is definitely a spot we're gonna have to get a camera on later. See, Russell, it's, it's actually not just the team. A lot of our guests have reported seeing something as well. Uh, they report seeing a small girl. We've never employed a little girl before. Guests have seen a little girl like that they think is part of the haunted house, it isn't? They haven't only seen her up here, they've seen her in the basement as well. Wait, there's a basement? Yep. We're actually down in the basement of our building now, uh, where this little girl has been reported being seen several times. In fact, we had an incident one time where one of the ride operators was watching the cameras as the ride was going through. She noticed an empty car. Next scene, she noticed a man sitting in the seat wearing a ball cap. She followed him through. Next scene, he was gone. I do not like this ride area at all. I have chills right now. A while back, some of our team members did their own EVP session. Really? They caught some really crazy stuff. In wow. fact, some of our team members don't even like being down here. Yeah, I get that vibe. Yeah, you ready to go? Yeah, let's, let's go. That basement area did not feel right. That definitely has to be a focus for investigation tonight. After several minutes, the ride delivers us from the bowels of the building to somewhere that feels much less menacing. This is like a giant maze, man. Where are we? We're actually back on street level. This is two large buildings that are connected to make one. And all three attractions are in one. I know this is an old building. I also know that the Alamo's right across the street. Is there any connection there that you know? You know, of? I really don't know. That's definitely something you want to talk to an expert with, though. Finding that info could be the key to this whole investigation. All right, well, listen, we're going to get our uh, equipment in, start getting set up. See what happens here. Are you sticking around tonight? Uh, I think I'm gonna head out. I think I'm gonna head out. I don't want any of this stuff following me back home. <laughs> All right, fair enough. We'll let you know we find. Hey, thanks, thanks for coming, man. Russell. Initially, I thought this place was gonna be connected to the Alamo. The longer I'm here, the less certain I am. Still though, I'm gonna put in a few calls to get the real story. Back inside the building, the team works their way through the maze of floors and rooms to set up for investigation. Outside, I've taken Alex's advice and called in an expert on the Alamo. Are you Michael? I am. Hey, I'm Russell. Russell, great to meet you. I'm told you're the Alamo expert. I right? am. Okay, good. I know a lot about the Alamo. I'm meeting up with Michael McGar, who's developed an app that can show us exactly where we are in relation to what was here in the days of the Alamo. On the iPad, we have an augmented reality piece where you can actually find a spot in the Alamo tap on it and go into the Alamo in 1836 and see it exactly what it was in 1836. What? At full scale. We have to catch the ground and we tap on it and now we see a portal into 1836. And where this is, this is kind of where all these businesses are now. Yeah, so this was... Which obviously weren't there. Yeah, so this was the west wall where they had built up the fort to defend themselves. So Michael, for our purposes, we're concerned with what happened right there. Well, let's go take a look. 
the reason that I care so much about this spot is we've been contacted by the owners of Guinness and Ripley's. Uh -huh. They've been having some paranormal activity in here. And yeah. with the close proximity to the Alamo, we can't help but wonder if there's some sort of connection. Here, in relation to the Alamo, the fort was Travis's headquarters was here. That's the famous letter that he wrote, victory or death. As far as the battle is concerned, no real battle part took place in this exact location. The heaviest part of the fighting was about 100 yards in either direction. All around this, though, was horrific carnage. But Travis lived here. Joe lived here. His slave lived with him. And he ran from this spot over there to the steps of the, of the post office and died there. And so he's 100 yards from where he died. But this is where his quarters were. This is where his quarters were. So if his spirit decided to hang out here, I mean, you, you might want to hang out where you used to live. It's a sobering thought to know you're standing in the very spot so many men breathed their last breath. It's even more sobering to realize their spirits could still be here, haunting this place eternally. It's time to brief the team. All right, guys, so we're downtown San Antonio here at Ripley's and Guinness, and they've been seeing activity here for years it's been going on, but they finally kind of want to know what's happening. I mean, everything from voices to shadows, they're even seeing doppelgangers here, which is something that we've never dealt with before. There's a little girl that's been seen both in the haunted house and in the basement. No idea what's happening, but Kendra, do we know historically what this was all about here? You know, Russell, this building has been here for a long time. I know at one point it was a palace theater uh, Maverick Bank building and then more recently the Woolworths building, but there's always been uh, property on the site. And as far as anything going on in there, nothing... Nothing out of the ordinary. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Joe, why do I get the feeling this whole doppelganger things is not good news? Well, typically doppelganger sightings are a bad omen, so let's hope we don't see any here tonight. If there is one walking around, we have cameras set up everywhere. We'll get them. So last thing before we get going, this is going to be interesting because we're actually investigating a haunted, haunted house, right? But on a more serious note, we got to keep in mind that this is hollowed ground. Where we're standing was once the Alamo. I met with a guy earlier who told us that basically where this is, is where Travis's quarters were. So it could be one of a thousand things in there, guys. To me, this has everything to do with the Alamo. It's an open and shut case. With all this talk of doppelgangers, there may be something more sinister going on here than we believe. All right, guys, be careful. Watch your backs. Let's do it. All right, lights out, cell phones off. You are go for Ripley's. Commence email sweep and report back if you have any issues. To begin, the team investigates the claims of uneasiness throughout the building, which could be caused by exposure to electromagnetic fields. There's a lot of electronics in here, so we're taking some sweeps, some EMS sweeps, uh, electromagnetic field sweeps, just to get a baseline of the room. Every electrical device creates an electromagnetic field that both humans and animals can be susceptible to. I don't see anything, though. No, nothing yet so far, nothing unusual. What you're looking for are strange spikes in EMF that are unexplained. A lot of times, feelings of uneasiness can be caused by high levels of electromagnetic fields. Long-term exposure can trigger headaches, even hallucinations. Meanwhile, in the basement, Jell and Vanessa continue their sweep. What the hell is this? This is one of the corridors where they get really creeped out. If you look at this, this is like original stone. You can almost see, like, it looks like there could be bones in the wall, like real bones. Gel, really? Wait, is that you? Street level? God, that's loud. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna go with street level because I don't want to think about the ghost that makes that kind of sound when they walk. 
Upstairs, Joey and I, well, we're working up the nerve to head in to the haunted adventure. Uh, what? Did you hear that? I came from the other side of the door. What was that? That straight up sounded like somebody was playing a church organ in the next room. The thing is, I personally witnessed them disconnect all the power from the haunted house. So where's this coming from? Team one to command. I gotcha. Did you guys just hear that music sounded like? Church organ. I did not, no. All right, hold on, I know I heard that. Now I feel like I need a little church in my life. Whether we're ready or not, here they come. Just uh, test an EMF here, it's pretty clean. No EMF in here. There's also not a door to get out of you. No, oh. I don't know. Is it one of these coffins or something? Here? Like, oh, there's a window. I don't know. It has to be around here somewhere. Oh. Whoa. I found it. That is some top-notch ghost hunting, Joey. You OK? Yeah, I'm good. I fell through a wall, and you just stood there and laughed. I mean, it was kind of funny. Hey, but there's a whole other room back here. I'm gonna get my uh, voice recorder out. We've already heard the organ music tonight. Let's see if we can't pick up some voices. Is there a little girl in here? They're hearing a lot of the floor creaking, that's for sure. No, I don't like this. Uh-oh. What? Walkie's dead. Not even an hour into the investigation, and something's killing our equipment. Is yours working? Team one to command. This thing better damn well be working. Did you drain the bathroom? Yeah, this is uh, command. Just want to give you a heads up. If you need to communicate with us, use this channel. Russell's walkie talkie just died. When y'all get to the butcher room, would you see if anything on the table uh, is loose? Ten four. We can do that. Did you see something move? I think so. Where's that at? Earlier tonight, Alex told us how they had to bolt down certain items in the kitchen scene in the haunted house because they kept moving. And now Jack thinks we might have caught it. All right, I'll see y'all. That stuff move at all? No, nah, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's in the same place uh, that I remember it being, but we'll keep an eye on it. We're going to do a session in here. What if I just took your plate over here, huh? Whoever's here with us. Soon as we start messing with the stuff on the table, the remote camera goes off. I think we may have struck a nerve. I swear to God, there's somebody in this room. It hasn't done it until y'all got in the room. What? What's wrong? What? Something touched me. I just felt pressure, like a hand pressing down on my head. You okay there, Russell? It felt like something touched my head. I'm looking to see if there's any, those like stringy things. Oh God, you don't get like this, uh, this feel? I know what they're talking about now. Because this whole place is just creepy. No, but it's like, you know, it's, it's overwhelming. Whatever's in here doesn't want us in here, that's for sure. And, and touch foot. I got like 11 minutes of battery left. How is that possible? Something's going on. They got something going on there. As the production crew races to get the cameras back up and running, Jell and Vanessa have called the entire team to the basement because of some bizarre activity. As we were doing a session with the Shack Hack, it suddenly started spitting out random names. Hey, Gary. Hi, Gary. Oh. Alan, I guess. Oh, yeah. Considering what happened down here previously, it could mean someone's ready to talk. During the walkthrough, Alex informed us about an experience several employees had in the basement. A while back, some of our team members did their own EVP session. Really? They caught some really crazy stuff. If there's really something nasty down here, we need to use our collective energy to find out what's going on. 
The team assembles in the basement. You want to try the portal? Yes. So the mini portal is another ITC device that filters out background noise and enhances voices. This is another device you can talk through. We can hear your voice. Do you have anything you want to tell us? I think it just said a bad word. And there's that nastiness they were talking about. Is there a little girl down here? If you like, no. Where's the little girl at then? I don't know. Yeah. I do. Go away. Now everyone wants to talk at once. Can you make a knock on the wall like you did earlier? That was a little girl. Out of this mass of voices, you just hear this little childlike voice say something like, can I? It sounded like it could have been a little girl to me. What happened to you? Get out. Get out. Whoever it is, is not yet ready to tell their story. As the night rages on, the team separate and continue in search of answers. Joey and I are still trying to find out more about who or what is lurking in the basement. People are afraid to be down here, and that's not okay. The question is why? A lot of bugs in here. I'm gonna be honest though, I totally get it. The vibe down here is intense. All right. <laughs> Oh, you hear that? Yeah. Do you want us to leave? What's your name? We're hearing little taps all around us, but no response. I don't know what to ask it, Joey, to make it to... Whoa. What was that? Who just tapped on the wall? Whoa. Stop it. What the f was that? What was that? I don't know. That, that was somebody messing with us, right? I'm hoping that was like them upstairs. That was so loud. Who's here? Holy crap. As it turns out, it wasn't a prank at all. Oh, and we're the only ones here. As the night comes to a close, Daryl gathers the team in the lobby to petition for one final session. I just can't shake the feeling that what's going on here has something to do with the Alamo. We haven't proven it yet, but we also haven't disproven it either. I don't think it has anything to do with it. I mean, there were no battles here. The main story is about a little girl. But you know what? If Daryl feels that strongly about it, then we should look into it. Should we try one thing just to make sure that we can say that 100%. We'll try playing some of the Alamo battle sounds to see if that maybe stirs something up. Music from a particular time period can sometimes elicit a response. Hopefully, as we play the battle sounds, anyone here connected to the Alamo will do something that we'll be able to capture. The team starts in with the experiment. really heavy in here. just sitting there and Daryl bolts from the table. I was watching and I saw a shadow go across. As I'm sitting here, I see the bottom of the door go completely black. Is there anybody else here? I know what I saw, but me being a skeptic, 
There has to be a logical explanation for this. Daryl and I searched the corridor for any signs of life that could have cast a shadow. This would have been pretty close to exactly where they made it. Is there it anybody over. else here? I'm saying no. <laughs> I knew this had something to do with the Alamo. Something just slid right under the door. I think it's highly likely that the hauntings at Ripley's are related to the Alamo just from the pure amount of bloodshed that happened there. The battle skirmishes may not have been in the exact same spot as Ripley's, but the whole area is soaked in blood, and whenever you try to call out to something, everything nearby is going to hear you. I can't wait to get home to review the evidence and see what we got. It's the new 96 one now, the Russell Rush Show. And hey, guys, look who's here joining us. Our friend Alex from Ripley's downtown. Hey, Alex, <laughs> what's, Alex what's up, man? What's Welcome. up, guys? I'm just what? ready to... I'm so excited to hear what y'all found. You want to know what happened uh, from our investigation? Hey, I'm sitting at the edge of my seat, like, right now. For yeah. those who missed the Russell Rush on a tour, we investigated Ripley's and the Guinness Museum downtown right across from the Alamo. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're ready to show you what we caught that night. But before we get there... Has anything weird happened since we've been there? Well, the Ripley's Haunted Adventure is a haunted house, so weird stuff happens like every single day. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to fight you on the fact that that place is haunted. We picked a couple of things up. The first thing, Jell and Vanessa were in the basement, and they heard what we believe sounds like Alamo drumming. Just listen. And just tell me what your name is. Oh, wow. It crazy. sounds like the drumming that <laughs> yes. the Mexican army would have made outside the Alamo walls. Yeah, it sounded like somebody was sitting there playing a snare. Ding, ding. In your basement. Wow. The second thing is a little more alarming. Jack was at our command station monitoring us remotely, making sure that we're safe. Mm -hmm. About 4 o'clock in the morning when there's nobody outside anywhere downtown. And the microphone on his camera picked up this. I, take a look. Okay. What was that? Oh, my God. What was that? It sounds like a scream of someone in agony, like maybe during the battle, maybe maybe someone's getting murdered. I have to drive home alone tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta, and, be, I gotta be there tomorrow morning. I was gonna too. say, and work there too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, wow. I have a feeling if you stay out of their way, they'll stay out of yours. Oh, hey, it's been 16 years. I think I, I've survived this long. I, I hope I'm all right. Hey, guys. Yeah. Seriously, I, I'm not messing around with y'all. Alex, I got to tell you, man, that's probably the closest we're ever going to get to investigating something to do with the Alamo. So thank you so much for having us hey, out. That thank night, you, guys. Belief is a funny word. The dictionary defines it as the acceptance that something exists. Belief can be comforting. It can be scary. Or, in the case of the Alamo defenders, deadly. For us, we've seen and heard way too much to not believe there's something out there. There's still more work to be done. But for now, we can say that Ripley's is haunted. Believe it or not. <laughs>